Hello friends, welcome back to another video of AutomationTestingInsider.com and today I'm going to talk about SDLC. So SDLC stands for Software Development Lifecycle. So it is a process to build any software in a systematic way. And there are different stages are involved in software development lifecycle. So what are those different stages? Like we have uh, system investigation, we have requirement analysis, we have design, we have coding, we have testing and at last we have release and maintenance of the product. So these are the six different stages of development life cycle. So do not worry about guys. Uh, I'm going to talk about them in detail in a couple of minutes in my PPT. And there are different stakeholders are involved in any uh, to build any software in any company. Like we have uh, we have business analyst, we have product analyst or subject matter experts. So these are the different more or less the same designation guys we have. Like we used to call product analyst in uh, product based companies or we used to call business analyst in business uh, in service based companies so and we have subject matter experts as well so these are the expert guys in particular area like suppose we want to we are going to build a software in finance domain or e-commerce application or any other domain so uh, these are the uh, guys who understands the requirement requirements from the client and we have project manager to develop the complete project plan of the software or product and then we have architects who builds the uh, the complete framework complete framework uh, framework in the sense like designing of the uh, the complete architecture of the software like high level design or low level design so i'm going to talk about them in detail in my ppt and then we have separate dev team uh, for the programming to develop the software we have development team and we have testing team as well to test the software and uh, we have uh, separate release team as well in some companies we have separate release team uh, release engineers uh, they release the software and then at last we have support guys after the release we have to maintain the uh, software or the uh, support of the software we have separate support guys so these are the uh, different stakeholders are involved in any software development life cycle and then we have uh, of course we have a finance team as well to to discuss about the cost of the software or uh, the negotiation uh, with the client we uh, we have finance team and then we have uh, we have uh, hr team as well for the recruitment of the new resources or uh, based on the desired skill sets we have a separate hr team or development uh, acquisition or talent development team so these are the different uh, stakeholders are involved in any uh, to build any software guys and now, now let's talk about the different stages uh, in detail in my ppt so let's get started so guys let's talk about software development life cycle in detail so as i have discussed earlier like any project development has to follow below phases like we have uh, system investigation, requirement analysis, design, coding, testing, and release and maintenance. So these are the different phases are involved to develop any project in the software development lifecycle. Now let's talk about them in detail. So what is system investigation phase? So in this particular phase, BA are involved to get the current business scenario or current business process of the customer to understand their uh, pain points, their issues. Uh, so BA is involved in this particular phase. So let's see what it says. So this is an important phase, uh, necessary stage in software development lifecycle. Understand the existing business process as I have discussed earlier. Gather all the data like what the customer wants to build, who will be the end user, what is the objective of the product. These are all done in this system investigation phase. It is business analyst, as I have discussed, and a project organizer organizer's responsibility. Basically, we used to connect with the client frequently with the help of business analyst. The higher management is also used to connect with them to understand their uh, pain points, uh, issues, like what are their expectations uh, from the uh, company. So these are all done in this system investigation uh, phase. So next is requirement analysis again ba will play an important role here, over here to get the requirement for the upcoming project 
for the current project for which we are developing the software development uh, we are for which we are uh, following the software development life cycle to get the current requirement requirements from the client so the next stage stage is to certainly represent and document the software requirements so this is accomplished through brd frd srs and frs documents so what are these documents so we have brd brd is business requirement document and it is built by business analyst we have frd is it is functional requirement document so this document tells us like what are the uh, customer requirements to build any software okay so what are the requirements from the customer is documented in documented in business requirement document and it is done by business analyst and with the help of ba we uh, used to pass all this information we used to give this to the technical team where all the document will be uh, uh, document will be created in detail level by frd document functional requirement document so like what are the customer requirements is captured in brd document and detail level information are captured in functional requirement document and there is software requirement specification document and it is done it is developed by uh, architect custom architect okay like we have uh, who who is building the framework uh, define all the software uh, required for the uh, software uh, for the product development or project development and then we have functional requirement specification so these are all different documents we have to capture all the requirements from the client uh, so this is accomplished through brd frd srs document which contains all the product requirements the requirement collected two types what are those two types so we have functional requirements you specify the behavior of the application is called the functional requirement like how our uh, product will behave is called the functional requirement and non-functional requirements so we have to capture both functional and non-functional requirements in our documents like you specify the characteristics and feature of the application like performance compatibility and usability or uh, security all will be done all comes under non-functional requirement we'll talk about them like performance testing compatibility testing usability testing going forward now here comes the design part so here system architect or uh, architect involved in this particular phase uh, and this phase is about to bring down all the knowledge of the requirements all the uh, documents which we have prepared analysis and design of the software project okay so we have to analyze it and we have to design the framework okay so in this particular phase this phase is the product of the last two like it is the combination of system investigation system investigation plus requirement analysis I like inputs from the customer and requirement gathering so in this particular phase we used to build uh high level design high level design and low level design low level design so what do you mean by high level design so take an example suppose i am i'm a builder and i am constructing a community uh apartment okay and so there uh, in high level design what uh, what i will do i'll capture all the high level information like how it should be how the community should be like what are the uh what are the different uh, what is the high level architecture of the community basically like it should have a gym it should have a community hall it should have the play area and it should have like a uh, number of flats so these are all comes under high level design okay and low level design low level design is nothing but like in detail level like in particular flat or how many rooms will be there like uh, we are, are we going to build 2 bhk 3 bhk all these information comes under low level design so system architect divides the design into two parts high level design and low level design so these are all done in this designing part software design part now here in this coding developers are involved in this phase the actual development begins and the programming is built it is the responsibility of the developers to write the coding based on design whatever the architects designed the uh, product 
based on that develop its developers responsibility to write the code developers have to follow the coding guidelines described by the management and the programming tools now here comes the testing after the coding is generated code is generated it is tested against the requirements to make sure the products and solving the needs address and gather during the requirements stage so we need to in this particular phase we have to create the I mean, we, whenever we get the at requ from the requirement phase itself we used to create the tester used to create the uh, test cases test plan and test cases and based on that we used to make the changes when actual testing is happening so in this particular phase we execute all our test cases uh, based on the customer requirements like we have captured whatever we have captured in the test cases in the form of test cases during this stage unit testing integration testing system testing and acceptance testing are done so these are the different testing levels guys unit testing is performed by the white box tester or developer and then all these testing like integration testing it is it is the integration of the different modules we have system testing acceptance testing are done in this particular phase so all kind of testing are performed in this particular phase and release and maintenance so once the software is certified if everything goes well and there are no bugs or errors are stated then it is deployed into production and if any issue in the software or any changes required it comes under the maintenance part so let's say suppose they uh, customer comes back with their their further requirements or they they want to change something in the software then that will be comes under maintenance part so taking care of the developed product is known as maintenance so that is maintenance and the maintenance of the project can be taken place by supporting or post production team so we have as i have discussed earlier we have support guys or post production team uh, who who are taking care of this maintenance part So this is all for today guys and uh, please like share and uh, if you have any question then please comment your question in the comment box and thank you for watching and please subscribe this channel and click the bell icon to get the notification for upcoming videos. Thank you so much.